Okay, just a brief look at HIV and AIDS. There's another video that I've made which goes into more detail about how HIV actually harms the immune system and AIDS as the acquired immune deficiency syndromes. Let's take a look. Um, it's caused by a virus. That's what HIV stands for. It's the human immunodeficiency virus. If you break that down, it sounds like uh, your immune system becomes deficient and it affects humans and it's a virus that is causing this. There's also other immunodeficiency viruses that exist for other organisms, including other primates, and uh, it's proposed that it may have jumped from these different organisms and uh, mutated and turned into the human form that affects us. So this virus actually affects the production of lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cell specifically. And these lymphocytes, once they get attacked, it basically messes with the chain of secondary immune defense and it ends up actually affecting a type of cell called helper T cells. If you're doing higher level, this will make more, more sense. And that prevents your body from being able to produce antibodies. And as you know from one of the previous videos, or if you've studied this already, uh, if you don't have antibodies, then you're missing the proteins that are able to attach to antigens on pathogens that have invaded your body, and you won't be able to actually fight them effectively. So in the extreme form, if it really de destroys your available uh, helper T cells and reduces your concentration of antibodies, then you're going to end up with full-fledged acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, where things that normally wouldn't get you sick actually start getting you sick, and it starts to become a life-threatening issue. Okay, these are some ways that you understand how HIV can be transmitted. Uh, there were some big public service announcements that came out before when people were really scared about this and how you could get it by kissing somebody, sharing ice cream, sitting on the same, same toilet seat. And now we understand very clearly how HIV is transmitted. So it can eliminate some of those fears that people have about such a scary disease. So transmission occurs through sexual intercourse, sharing needles if you're doing drugs or even from uh, needles that are unclean and haven't been sterilized or used needles in a hospital, but for the most part, I think we're pretty well taken care of. Transmission also occurs from the mother to the child across the placenta or through breastfeeding and also in blood transfusions that haven't been properly checked. Antibiotics, not to be confused with antibodies, which are proteins made by our own white blood cells, are actually drugs that we have created to help us fight off bacterial diseases and bacterial diseases only. So when we say chemicals made by microorganisms to kill or control growth of other organisms, uh, the truth is, is that a lot of these drugs, these antibiotic drugs, have actually been synthesized or isolated from other types of living organisms. So penicillin, for example, we're going to talk about in a little bit here. Now, an important thing to note is that antibiotics are only good for bacterial diseases. So if it is known <clears throat> that you are actually sick because of a viral infection, antibiotics will not be effective against that particular disease. And that's a problem because in the past, and even now, antibiotics are being prescribed as medication from doctors a little bit too much and uh, they're becoming not so useful anymore because of something called antibiotic resistance which you'll learn about in the evolution unit. Another thing to mention is because it only blocks processes in prokaryotic cells that's good because it doesn't actually affect our cells. So when I take antibiotics to kill the bacterial infection uh, the antibiotics are targeted towards the metabolic processes that are going on in the bacterial cells and not in my cells and that's why we can use the drugs harm them without harming us which is really useful. We can't target viruses, I mentioned that before. Viruses don't have metabolism and they're using the human cells as hosts themselves. So you're, if these drugs are designed to mess with the processes that are happening inside bacteria, then it's not gonna be useful for fighting against viruses who don't have their own metabolism and instead they are kind of hijacking another cell. So if you really wanna harm the viruses that are inside the actual cell, you actually have to kill the human host cell, which is usually our own cells. And so that's not good. Committing suicide in order to kill the viruses, that totally defeats the purpose of drugs and medication. 
As mentioned, some bacteria have evolved these genes, resulting in resistance, and, and that's a problem. Tuberculosis is one such example. And there's some good articles out there about this and why we are not, why pharmaceutical companies are not investing money in antibiotics. I mean, the whole idea is that you're supposed to reduce their usage in order to make them more effective. And that's just not a money maker for a pharmaceutical company. If you're a drug company, you want people giving out your drugs as much as possible, then you make more money. So it's not actually financially viable to research new antibiotics. And so that's why we're kind of running out of the stash as more bacteria become resistant to them. A lot of these antibiotics are becoming less useful. That's pretty depressing. Okay, one example of an antibiotic that's being used or that was used was penicillin. It still is used today. Penicillin was discovered by Flory and Chain and they tested this on mice with pneumonia and only those that were treated with the penicillin actually recovered. So they gave some the real penicillin and some a fake penicillin or didn't do it and they were able to tell the difference there. Immediately then, they started testing on humans who were cured as a result, and because of their wonderful research, we now know that penicillin could be used as an antibiotic to help cure people of disease. They couldn't have probably done what they were doing back then today, because nowadays there's a lot more stringent uh, rules that are set in place to kind of protect the moral and ethical uh, boundaries of all of this. You definitely need to do animal testing, but nowadays we probably need to do more animal testing and with double blind tests and then actually test it on healthy humans first to see if there's any kind of uh, side effects before moving on to testing on patients with the actual uh, disease that you're trying to test this particular drug effectiveness. And then you would also have to make sure you're doing double blind tests where the people who are receiving the drug don't actually know if they're getting the real drug or not. It's called a placebo because the placebo can sometimes have a positive effect. You really want to find out if it's the result of the actual chemical that you're actually introducing. All right.